Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you just how quick and easy it is to throw together a super cute wine tumbler. You of course can do this on any style tumbler of your choosing. The technique stays exactly the same. All you're going to need to get started is a tumbler, your favorite base paint, uh, coordinating glitter, and then any kind of floral decals you like. In my case, I'm going to use a semi-transparent sheet of vinyl that I've cut up to make fit my tumbler, but you can use any kind of rub-on transfer or anything like that that you like. So let's get started. All I've done is I've prepped my tumbler and spray painted it rustic pink from Rust-Oleum. I've given it one coat and let it dry thoroughly. And then you're going to see me come in with some Mod Podge, which I know is funny because you guys know I hate Mod Podge and I never use it. But it is the best application for this particular method to me. So I'm going to paint some Mod Podge on and I'm only going to go about three quarters of the way down my cup. Now I'm not going to fully glitter this entire area, but I do want some little stragglers to cling towards the bottom. So I'm just going to take my glitter. Today I'm using Pink Flutter from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And I'm going to go a little bit heavy at the rim so I get really solid coverage. And then I'm going to angle my cup very steeply and I'm going to use a very light hand and I'm going to sprinkle that glitter just like you would in an ombre. I know it's a little bit hard on camera to tell just how steep the cup is and how light I'm sprinkling because the actual jar gets in the way. But just know it's a very, very light sprinkle and I'm aiming for the very top rim where I have the solid coverage. You don't want to aim for where you want the glitter to end. You want to aim at the top and let it gently cascade down so not very much sticks. You can see me taking my finger and kind of moving a few pieces back up. If they get a little bit too low on you or there's just too many in one spot and it's not as sparse as you wanted it, you can kind of move those around um, and adjust it as you go. So I'm just making sure as I move out of frame here, I'm just kind of checking my cup as I spin it to make sure it's pretty level all the way around with the glitter line. You do want it to be like a, an ombre where it fades out and there's just like very few at the end, but you do want it to kind of be even all the way around. You don't want it two inches on one side and three inches on the other side. So I just spin it around as I go. So I need to set this tumbler aside and let that Mod Podge dry to move on to the next step. So while that's sitting there, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up my vinyl and getting my floral pieces ready. So they're going to be floated off the edge of the cup, so I don't need to have perfect pieces. We're going to piece these all together to make like one seamless pattern. But this vinyl is super cute. It's from Create by Firefly. Everything that you see that's white on it is actually clear. So I'm just going to cut off this corner. And then I'm going to trim that in half because remember the floral is going to extend over the edge of the cup. I'm just kind of sizing it right there to see how many more pieces I might need. And then I'm going to go halfway through this next one as well. So I'm going to find a way to piece these together and make one little seamless floral that goes around the cup with it. So that's pretty long there. That's going to be plenty for me to use. And I know right now you're looking at this thinking, Courtney, what are you doing? But I promise you, trust the process. It's going to come together in the end. So now my Mod Podge is dried and I'm just going to seal this with a little bit of polycrylic. So obviously it's not a solid glitter cup, but I don't want the glitter to stray and move around too much because I've got a nice gentle fade on it. So I don't want to drag any glitter down to the bottom as I'm epoxying it and have clumps down there. So I'm just going to go ahead and seal this up with a coat of polycrylic and it'll be ready to go on the turner for a coat of epoxy. Now, polycrylic does dry really, really quickly for you, but make sure you give it ample time to dry because you don't want any issues with your epoxy coat looking milky. So now I've had one coat. I did 15 mils of Mr. Nola's Fast Set, and it is ready to go. I did Dremel my edge like I always do for all my tumblers before I started recording this process. So I'm just going to take that first piece of vinyl and I'm going to peel it up. I'm going to float the edge off the cup and I'm just gonna stick it down. It could not get any easier. After I get this first piece placed, I'm gonna kinda look at the edges and see what I need to tweak to blend them together. So you can see that right edge is kind of triangular and weirdly shapen. So I'm just gonna trim that off right up snug next to the rose next door. And then I'm gonna reposition that vinyl and kinda eyeball it again. And I'm gonna trim off just that little tiny dark spot. This is a clear vinyl, so some things will show through. So I wanna make sure I have two nice roses that butt up against each other. So I'm gonna peel that up again. 
And you can see that the left edge of the new vinyl is kind of bluntly cut. So what I'm going to do to hide that is I'm just going to peel up this rose that's already down and I'm going to nestle that other one underneath it just a little bit to make it look like they're bunched up together and I don't have any weird harsh edges anywhere. So every single time you make a tumbler like this, you're just going to be eyeballing it and filling in gaps where you need to, kind of making things flow a little bit so you can trim off what you need as you go. I'm just trimming off a little bit of the excess clear. It is okay if you choose to leave it, but the closer you trim it towards the design, the less likely it is that people are going to see those lines anywhere. Make sure you're putting these clear decals down over nice, shiny, smooth epoxy, no sanding, no bumps. So after I get that top edge all trimmed up, I just kind of rotate my cup around and look at it and see if I like the way everything is flowing, if it looks good, if there's any little weird pieces I want to trim off. I trim off all the excess clear that I can. And as I kept spinning this, I kept looking at this one spot thinking, I wish there was a little more leaf that hung down. So I grabbed my sheet of vinyl and I looked for one little portion of a rose that had some petals that would stick out just a little bit more. And then I'm kind of eyeballing it here and trying to decide how I want to place it. So like this piece, I'm going to use it, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to lay it yet. So you guys can see here, I've taken this little extra piece and I've put it on top and it looks a little bit awkward. It kind of breaks up that little pattern I had going. It just looks out of place. So after a couple of um, eyeballing measurements here where I was kind of deciding how far I wanted it to stick out, I had this great idea that I'll just split the vinyl open, I'll put the rose underneath it, it'll look like one more nestled under the cluster, and that leaf will be able to extend down just a little bit. So I just took my X-Acto knife and cut a little slit and carefully peeled back both edges of the vinyl. And then I'm going to kind of place it a little bit lower than the top rim because I want that leaf to extend and it to kind of, you know, look like it's background rose. Then I'm just going to take my squeegee and make sure I rub that down really well so everything is sealed back up to the edge good. So I'm checking it out and I really like the way it looks now. But then as an afterthought, I decided I want to make the bottom cute too. So I cut a two inch circle out of the same vinyl pattern and I cut a little ring, um, a matching champagne ring to go around it as well. Now I did stick this on a piece of transfer tape just so I could have a little more control of how well I centered it. I was going to just eyeball it, but then I thought, no, I'm going to do it right. Okay, so right about here is where I need to apologize because my phone stopped recording on me three different times during this tutorial. So that's why there's no epoxy coats being shown. Um, and that was a little bit of an abrupt end there to the circle bottom. But my phone is being persnickety with me. So I'm doing the best I can here with the footage I do have. So um, I decided, okay, I've got this cute little ring on the bottom I'm going to do, and I know I'm going to cut a decal. I'm not entirely sure what yet, but I thought I really want to tie it all together with a little champagne stripe around the top. So very carefully, I always dremel my top with a um, flap wheel. And so very carefully, I'm just running that stripe just below that exposed very thin silver line to make sure that I'm not undoing the dremeling that I did. But I also don't want it too low so that any of the cup shows through at the top. So I'm just kind of very carefully placing that line right where I want it at the top. And then I will seal this with a coat of polycrylic as well, just to make sure everything stays in place no bubbles happen nothing wants to pop up while it's turning on the turner after that coat of polycrylic sealer dried it was ready to go on the turner she got two final coats in the first coat I put a teensy little pinch of pixie dust from bougie glitter boutique it is a super super ultra fine glitter additive it just gives it a very subtle all-over shimmer and I thought it would be really pretty over the florals so two coats and she was good to go as always, all of the tools and products you saw me use today are linked in the description box below. Some of them even have discount codes available for you there. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this cute little wine tumbler today, and I hope that you feel inspired to make one yourself that honestly could not come together any easier, but it comes out so stunning. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, hop over to my free Facebook group at A Bit of Bling Creative Community. It's a great place where you can watch lots of other lives and see other tutorials. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye!